Hello and welcome to the Cooper Environmental Center at Caddis Island County Park. My name is Megan Zorn, Senior Park Naturalist, and I just wanted to start off today by thanking all of the viewers so far who have tuned into our Facebook Live videos. Um, you've given us such positive feedback and it just kind of gives us naturalists, um, you know, a purpose through all of this, this craziness. And we really enjoy bringing these programs to you at home because um, we know you might have um, science classes that this kind of helps to supplement or maybe you're just curious to learn something at home as an adult. Um, so we really love doing these for you guys. Um, we've had a little bit of a change of plans today. So um, we have Thor for you today, our northern pine snake. He was a little bit grumpy when I took him out this morning. Um, but we do have his little brother or his little half brother Loki on standby in case he gets a little bit, a little bit grumpy today. So here's our handsome pine snake, Thor. He's a northern pine snake. And yes, he's very large. He is the largest snake that we have here at the Nature Center, and he's not even three years old yet. Um, so he's grown very, very fast since we've had him. Um, and he is a threatened species in New Jersey. So there are four subspecies of pine snakes in the United States, one being the northern pine snake. That's the one you're going to find in New Jersey. And there's also um, bull snakes, black pine snakes, and Florida pine snakes. And um, they all have something in common, which is the shape of their head. Um, some of them look similar in terms of color and pattern, um, but you can identify a pine snake regardless of the subspecies by the shape of its head. So, Thor's not gonna do a good job of staying still for me. He's a little bit wiry. Most of our snakes will just kind of coil up and chill out on our arm when we handle them, but Thor's a little bit squirmy and that's okay. He's a heavier bodied snake. Come on, bud. Let's see if he'll cooperate. So pine snakes have a relatively small head size compared to the, the size of their body. And it's also very pointed in the front. So if we can get a close look, maybe we'll use his brother Loki to get a, a closer look at their head in a bit but they have four what's called prefrontal scales on their nose. Most snakes only have two. They also have an extra large rostral scale. Come on, buddy. Hello. All right, we might have to use Loki for this. He's getting a little too squirmy. Come on, we'll take you back out in a bit. Now he's not gonna wanna go back in his box. But they have an extra large scale on the tip of their nose. And they also have, they also have what's called, <laughs> he doesn't want to go back now. They also have what's called keeled scales. So when you look at most snakes, they're kind of shiny. And if the light hits them, they look almost wet. So I use hand sanitizer before um, I handle any other animal. Um, just like people, if one of them is sick and we're not aware of it yet, we don't want to spread that to another animal. So we'll get a good close up look of his little brother here. It's very cute, he's got a unibrow, he's a little more uh, even-tempered for us, and he's just smaller and easier to handle. So he's only a year younger than Thor, so we're not sure if he's gonna catch up, um, but he's going to grow quite large as well. But if you take a look at their nose, it kind of looks like a shovel. They've got some thick scales there, and that's to help them burrow. And the keeled scales, you'll see he's not as shiny as some other snakes. Um, pine snakes have a much more textured appearance to them. And all of these indicate that they are built for digging and burrowing. So in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, um, there's lots of sandy, dry soil, and they will burrow in that soil to um, you know, make nests. They will burrow to hunt for underground in the Pine Barrens. And they will also burrow to help thermoregulate. Um, so Underground is kind of like a nice, um, happy medium for them to help regulate their body temperature. The Pine Barrens can get very hot and sunny in the summertime, especially in the open areas. So they might burrow underground to cool off, and that's called estivation. It's almost like the op opposite of hibernating. So they go into a state of dormancy until the, the weather cools off a little bit and they can emerge from their burrow. And they will hibernate in the winter to keep their, their bodies from freezing because like all reptiles, snakes are cold-blooded. So they rely on their environment to help keep themselves comfortable. So in addition to their, their ability to burrow, pine snakes have an adaptation called a mimicking behavior. 
So a lot of animals in nature will exhibit mimicry. Um, you might be familiar with monarch butterflies. They have that bright orange color with the black bands, very distinct. Um, but monarch butterflies are actually toxic and taste really bad to most birds. So if a bird eats a monarch butterfly, it's going to get sick and then it's never going to want to eat another monarch butterfly again. So lots of other types of butterflies that aren't toxic have evolved to have that same bright orange color. So the birds won't eat um, the lookalikes, they, look, they won't eat the mimics. So pine snakes have more of an active type of mimicry. So we do have timber rattlesnakes living in the pine barrens as well. And pine snakes will mimic these rattlesnakes. Um, when I first took Thor out, he uh, hissed at me a little bit, which is why I knew he was in a grumpy mood today. Um, so they will puff up, make themselves look really large to scare off predators. And they will also hiss. Sounds very, very loud and quite intimidating. And they will wiggle their tail like the rattle of a rattlesnake. And if they're sitting in the leaf litter, which is abundant in the pine barrens, it's going to sound very much like a rattle. And that defensive posture will likely scare off a predator like a fox or a coyote. And if it doesn't, they won't hesitate to bite. Um, they're not a venomous species, so um, an animal's not in danger of, of being envenomated by a pine snake. But um, a bite from a snake the size of Thor would be very, very painful. Um, so an animal will be wise to avoid that and leave the snake alone. So let's see if we can take Thor back out for a little bit so you can appreciate his size. So pine snakes can grow up and over six feet in length and weigh between four and eight pounds. Let's see if he wants to come out again. So I talked about um, shedding briefly when I um, showed Luna in, our, in my first video, and I got a lot of questions about how snakes exactly shed their skin. So this is actually a full recent shedding from Thor. You can see how large it is. Um, so the snakes have skin. You can see those keeled scales, how close they are together. So that's from a pine snake, and I also have, I think he knocked it off the table. I've got a smaller piece from a snake with those smoother scales. You can see they're much flatter and less crinkled. So snakes have a really thick scales, kind of like an armor plating to protect them. So we're shedding our skin all of the time as people. If we, you know, sometimes you might see if your skin's got a dry patch, you can see that skin flaking off, or if you've got an itch, or even when you wash your hands, we're constantly shedding our skin. Snakes just do it in a more obvious way. So here are the belly scales, and here are the back scales. And this, this skin is actually inside out here. So they shed their skin much like you might take off a sock or your shirt inside out. And they need to shed this outer layer. It's just one, one cell thick. And that will reveal a nice, bright, shiny layer. You hear that hiss? <laughs> you don't want to be handled today, do you? Animals have grumpy days and off days just like people do, and that's okay. We'll just leave them alone. <laughs> so when they're ready to shed, um, they're, he'll look even scarier because uh, their eyes will turn a cloudy um, like gray-blue color, and they almost look like a zombie, kind of. Um, so we don't like to disturb them when they're about to shed because they feel very vulnerable. Um, snakes already don't have a sense of hearing, so when their eyes go cloudy, that's from a layer of fluid that's built up between their new skin that's about to be revealed and their old skin that's shedding off. So they have kind of like a, a contact lens instead of an eyelid, so we can see right here, there's the eyes. So they get a new set of contact lenses, a nice fresh pair every time they shed but they can't see through it when it's cloudy, so we leave them alone um, for the one to two week period while they're waiting to shed. And when it's time for their skin to peel off, they're gonna find a rough object like a rock or maybe a tree branch, and they're gonna rub their nose against it. And then they're just going to kind of slide along that rock and their skin will peel inside out. Ideally, it's going to, to come off in one large piece like this. Um, if, if the air has been too dry, it might come off in little pieces like this here. And it's very delicate. It kind of feels like um, a thin piece of plastic. And I know when we pass this around to kids when we go to schools or they come to us, um, they have kind of an urge to, to crinkle it and it breaks apart very easily. Um, yeah, so here's that 
where it splits right there. So if you see any of, any of these snake skins in your backyard, you know you've had snakes coming through. Um, so like I said, pine snakes are a threatened species in the state of New Jersey. Corn snakes are as well. And a lot of people fear snakes. I know um, Thor is a little bit, even I'm a little bit uh, timid of him when he starts to get that aggressive posture when he's not in the best mood. Um, but if we leave them alone, they, they don't want to harm us. Um, so in the Pine Barrens, we, we, well, we actually have the Pinelands National Reserve. It's about a 1.1 million acre piece of land that's protected. Um, it's protected habitat for animals. We have um, forests, wetlands, and farmlands incorporated into, into those acres. And it's a, it's a really great place for, for wildlife to thrive, but it obviously still isn't enough because we have lots of reptiles and other animals that are still threatened and endangered. So, um, can we watch that again? So snakes like Thor here, they need to sun themselves. So let's say he's waking up early in the morning. He's just emerged from his burrow. He's a little chilly and he wants to slither out to the warm blacktop. So New Jersey is very heavily fragmented, which means it's all of its natural areas are broken up by roadways and housing developments and commercial developments. So they're going to have dangers like roads to cross. So he might want to sun himself if he was living in the wild. He would want to sun himself on that nice warm blacktop early in the morning. And then if a car comes flying by at 50 miles an hour, that's going to be the end of it for the snake. Or they might be trying to cross the road to get to an area with more resources. They might be looking for water, more food, or mates and nesting sites. And it's a danger every time they cross those roads. Um, so it's just always a good idea. Um, to, to keep a lookout, especially if you're driving through um, Pine Barrens areas and the closer to the, the southern area of New Jersey, just to keep an eye out for these guys sunning themselves on the road. Um, another threat to their numbers is actually the illegal pet trade. Um, the, the reptile pet trade um, generates dollars in the billions every single year. Um, you can see any people want to own these snakes, they want to have them as pets. I have a couple of pet reptiles myself, so there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but we have to make sure that we, um, you know, we're responsible about that. We don't take them from the wild and we, we make sure we do our research before we, we own a pet reptile. So we want to purchase them from captive breeders. That's where we got our two beautiful pine snakes here. Because ones that you get from captive breeders, they're going to be healthier. Um, ones that are captured from the wild will often have parasites, which is going to shorten their lifespan. And they will also not be as, as easy to handle. Um, you can imagine Thor's not, you know, he's not super keen on being handled for too long, but you can imagine if he was a wild caught snake, you can imagine the aggression they would have after being taken from their home. Um, so snakes that were raised in captivity, like Loki, he's, he's very calm. He's, we've had him since he was even smaller than he is now. Um, so they, they don't mind being handled. So it's just a more enjoyable experience for the animal and it's more enjoyable for, for the pet owner. So you can actually handle your pet snake. And one last thing, is that we want to make sure that people respect these animals. Um, a lot of people fear them. So if they're coming through your backyard, um, you know, I've, I've heard stories of people being so fearful of a, a tiny garter snake that they actually went, went and harmed the snake because they were in fear for their life or fearing for their child or their pet. Um, most snakes in New Jersey are not venomous. Um, which is really great. So I thank you guys for watching because you're trying to educate yourselves. And if you're aware of the, the different species that we have and you're familiar with how to identify them, um, you're less likely to fear them. And you'll know that the snake entering your backyard is maybe just a garter snake looking for some crickets in your crawl space. Or maybe it's a black rat snake looking to, to munch on some rodents that you have running around, things that we find a little, a little pesky. So if you guys have any questions about snakes or even pet ownership, you can leave um, some questions in the comment section for me. Again, my, my name is Megan Zorns and I'll answer those for you as soon as I can get to them. And keep a look out this Friday at 11 o'clock. Nikki Vernaccio, another senior park naturalist here, um, depending on the weather, she's hoping to go outside and take you on a hike. Um, and if not, she's going to be showing you another large animal that we have, which is our common snapping turtle. So it'll be a surprise. 
Um, so uh, thanks for watching and take care.